Hey guys, welcome back. And look what I got, guys. Uh, I'm taking this video thing to a whole other level. So this creepy thing looks like a UFO. It's actually a really cool microphone. So hopefully I'm gonna sound way better than I did in the uh, first video. I wanna tell you a crazy story today. And uh, I wanna just get our mind off of coronavirus because I, I personally had enough of hearing about that in the news. So my mom always said that the truth always comes out. It doesn't matter how many years later, but it does. And you know what, she was right. So I wanna tell you a story about, you know how people usually don't believe survivors for a long time until it turns out that their story was actually true. And today's story is something like that. So I have, I was interviewed for the first time by a news writer lady for one of Canada's largest newspaper around 2009. I told her my story just when I was coming out with my story and she asked me what I was doing in Hungary before I was trafficked. So I told her that I was working on music videos. I worked with really famous people and celebrities. I actually directed my first music video at the age of 16. At the end of the uh, interview, she said, I'm really sorry, but I have a really hard time believing your story about your childhood. So I don't know if I can believe the rest of your story and it's gonna be very risky to run this story in a newspaper. I didn't know what to say to that. Do I think my stories are crazy? Absolutely. I know it's hard, really hard to believe it, but it's all true. So here's a story that I've been telling for almost nine years now, or 10 years to friends and family, and sometimes even at presentations. I stopped saying it in the media because no one would believe me. But just today, I actually got an evidence to prove it. A real evidence to prove that one of my crazy stories is actually not a lie. And I'm so excited about it and I'm going to share it with you because what else are we gonna do with ourselves during this? <laughs> okay, here we go. I don't even think it was in a book to be honest. So in 2005, I actually initiated a project called No More Violence and it was supposed to help uh, the hip hop community to come together and write songs and come together for a public service announcement and um, encourage the next, gen next generation of hip hop artists to stop talking about young women and girls in songs like bitches and hoes. I was already offended by it back in the day before I was even a, an advocate for human trafficking. And I had a really hard time watching where the music industry is heading. So I reached out to one of the biggest hip hop artists in our time, which is Run DMC and DMC within Run DMC on the internet, on MySpace, if you still remember what that was. And I emailed him and I said, this has to stop. We need to come together. You're the grandfather of hip hop. Why don't you gather the gang together? I would like to do this if you make the music, if I get some money for it, can you do this? And he was so interested, he actually replied to me and he invited me to New York. So crazy story, I'm walking through the Rainbow Bridge and a costumes officer stops me and asks the reason for your visit in the United States. And I said, oh, I'm going to actually meet DMC from Run DMC and uh, we are going to, work on a project, you know, to stop violence and stuff. He looks at me, he's like, say what? I said, he goes, you know what? You don't need to repeat it. This is the craziest shit I ever heard in my entire career. And even if you're full of crap, I'm just gonna let you through because this was like the greatest entertainment. I was offended. I looked at him and I'm like, um, sir, I am not lying. This is the truth. I'm gonna go and meet the MC from Run DMC and we're gonna save the world together. Come on now. He didn't believe me. 
So he goes, uh, can you verify it? I said, here's his phone number. Call him. He's like, yeah, right. I'm going to call this number and I'm going to talk to him. I said, yes. So he goes to the back. He calls him. He calls all of his uh, officers around. It's actually, he's answering the phone. And I can hear him, sir, yo, I can't believe I'm going to get your autograph. This is the address you can send it. I'm like, whew, think I'm going to get into the United States. I landed in New York. We spent a few days together. I ended up going to his studio, which he's actually sharing with Public Enemy, which is amazing. So I met them and it was fantastic. We talked a lot about the pop culture and he really wanted to get involved. And um, so I said, I'll come back to Canada. I'll raise some money if we can get the boys together. Um, I'll have everything we need in a few months. Unfortunately, can you imagine a white little girl go and telling people that she wants to bring back the hip hop industry and raise some money with the Hungarian accent in Canada? Needless to say, it didn't go really well. I didn't really raise a lot of money and um, we ended up just uh, staying friends and then unfortunately I lost touch with him. But it's a true story. It is so true that actually today I got in touch with a one of the Hungarian band that I used to work with. They were actually, and to this day, they are the largest hip hop band in the Hungarian uh, music industry. Their name is Animal Cannibals. And they actually got famous again because their music video ended up on Jimmy Kimmel Live three months ago or four months ago. I'll tell you that story at another interview. But anyways, I got in touch with them and one of the band members name is Richie, Richie P. And it was his birthday when I was with DMC. And I never forgot that and I wanted to surprise him. So I actually got DMC to do a video message to Richie P in Hungary and say happy birthday man, so on and so forth. And I thought this would be amazing. So guess what just surfaced today? Yep, the video. I just got that video today. So I'm going to end, end up putting that video right after my message. You can watch it to me and Aggie with DMC from Run DMC um, saying a birthday message. Why did I tell you this story? I have a lot of crazy stories. I think I'm like Forrest Gump. Honest to God, I'm just at places, at times, I contact people, I don't even know half of the time who they are and things just usually end up working out. Well, except the part when I got traffic. Anyways, so I have a lot of crazy stories but that doesn't mean I'm lying and what I'm trying to say is that the crazier the story sounds especially when you work with victims of human trafficking the most likely it will happen or it did happen thank you so much for watching and I hope you're staying healthy and I hope I entertained you for a minute with a cool story there's more to come and I'll see you at the next episode thank you Hey guys, this is Tineo from uh, Canada and this message is for Richie P from Animal Cannibals. I'm standing here with, uh, I don't even think I need to introduce hey. him. Uh, I'm Leo standing on TMC The Place to Pee, hanging out here in Canada with my girl Tamia, and I got this little message to send to Richie P and Animal Cannibals, keep representing hip-hop, as long as we alive, hip-hop can never die, keep on kicking it, and ripping it, and flipping it, and we're going to make this world a better place to live in, because hip-hop rules.